Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a countdown timer. So what I mean by a countdown timer, let me go ahead and show you three examples. This first example is a bunch of circles counting from 5 to 1 and when I press the spacebar to execute this animation, it's going to go from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here's another example and this is an arrow that is going to fade down from the green to red and it's also going to show the times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it goes from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then it stops. And here's a third example where we have 5 in a square and once I press the space bar it's going to count down and it's going to go from 5 to 1 and the only thing that's going to change is just the number so it'll be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then it'll just disappear. So let me go ahead and go back into the uh, layout. So here we are in a, a new slide. So let me go ahead and show you how I created uh, each one of these. So let's start first with the countdown, the circles that count down. So basically what you want to do is you want to insert a circle. In the Home tab, there is a circle or an oval here in the drawing group. Also, if you go under the Insert tab, you can also insert shapes here and you'll see a bunch of shapes here. You can insert the recently used shape which is an oval or the basic shape which is an oval here which you can draw into a circle. I'm just going to go back into the home tab here and select the oval shape here. Now when I go into the slide here you have to press the shift key in order to draw a perfect circle. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a perfect circle here. If you didn't press the shift key to draw out that oval to make it a perfect circle, it's just going to draw out an oval. So once I have this circle here, I'm going to go ahead and click on the format ribbon here under the drawing tools. And I'm just going to choose one of these predefined shape styles. I'm going to go ahead and just select green here and just uh, stay with that one. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just type the number here. I'm going to type the number 5 and I'm going to increase the size of that. I'm going to select that and then the shortcut, this little mini toolbar comes up. I'm going to increase the size a bit here. Let's go ahead and make it up to 32. And I'm going to go ahead and just create uh, another one. I'm going to go ahead and create four more of these circles. I can press Control c to copy, Control v to paste, but there's an actually an easier shortcut and that's Control d and that duplicates this particular shape. So I'm just press Control d four times. Control d Control d Control d Control d and there are my shapes here. So let me go ahead and bring out these shapes here a little bit so I can see them a little bit more clearly. Whoops. Control Z to undo that rotation. Bring this one out here. Bring this one out here. So that's five. Let me go ahead and double click this and change that to four. Double click that, change that to three. Double click that, whoops, double click that, change that to two, and then change this to one. I'm also going to give these three last shapes a different color. I'm, I'm going to give that red. And once I select the other one, I can just press the F4 key. It will duplicate the last command. So I can press this, press F4, and it will duplicate the last command. So let me go ahead and uh, line these up a little bit here. Five, four over here. And you can see that PowerPoint's kind of nice where it kind of guides you here. Let me go ahead and bring three over here. And then bring two down at the bottom here. And then bring one down at the bottom here. So I've got that kind of laid out. And now I want to do is I want to incorporate the animation here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the all these circles. I'm going to go ahead and just draw this particular shape here. And now it's selected all of them. And once they're all selected, go under animations. And then what I'll do is add the animation. And I want to add the animation where they disappear. So I'm going to select this particular disappear animation. And once that's selected, you can see that now there's like these numbers there. What I can do is to make sure that I have a better view into the animation. I'm going to bring up my animation pane here. So it's going to show you what the an what animations are occurring, which order. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You can see that it's all, they're all oval, so it's oval 1, oval 2, oval 3. But then it also tells you the value in there. This is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I want to have 5 as my first one. So I want to go ahead and change the duration now. Now the duration, the change of the duration, that time is going to be the inverse of this number. So 5 is going to be 1, and then 4 is going to be 2, and then I'm going to click this over 3. 3 is going to be 3, it's the same thing. 2 is going to be 4, and over 5 is going to be 5, right? So basically we have, if I go to 5, it's going to be 1, 2, 
three, you're looking at duration, four, and five. So basically what it's saying is this one's going to disappear in one second, that's going to disappear in two seconds, this is going to disappear in three seconds, this one in four seconds, and this one in five seconds. So if I go ahead and start the animation here and just put it into slideshow view, let me go and click that, and press the space bar to start this animation, you'll see five goes first, and then four, three, two, one. And so that's the countdown timer for that one. So let's go into the next example where we have the arrow going down. Let me go ahead and just select these shapes and press delete. And let's go and try to do our second example where we have the arrow. So I'll go into insert and go into shapes. This is the other way to do it. Instead of going into the home tab, I can go into the insert tab and go into shapes and just select this bottom arrow this down arrow and just draw out the arrow. I can make it any size here. And once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and press Control D to duplicate that shape. So I'm going to make one shape with the colors and one shape for the numbers and overlay it on top of each other. Now go ahead and select this first arrow shape. I'm going to Shape Fill and select Gradient and I'm going to select more gradient here. And so I'm going to select this radio button for Gradient Fill so for this first gradient stop, stop one of three, I'm going to go ahead and select the green color here. So I'm going to select this green color here. And then this middle position, I'm going to select yellow. And then this last position here, I'm going to go ahead and select red. So now it's got kind of a nice rainbow color. Uh, for the line color, I'm going to have no line color. I'm going to not have a line color here. Go ahead and click close. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and first, I'm going to change the shape color here to no fill. But first, I'm going to have a number in here. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to press number five, press return, four, return, three, press return, key, two, press return, and then one, press return. Or oh, actually, I don't need that last return. I can just keep it like that. Now I'm going to go and select this range of numbers and just increase the font size. Go back to the home tab and increase the font size till it uh, pretty much takes up the whole shape but not all of it. Let me see that. May maybe 60 is a bit large. 60 seems like it would fit. Uh, since I'm going to have a white background, I'll go ahead and make the font color black. So I'm going to go ahead and select th those uh, numbers and have it black. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the fill color for the shape and the border empty. I'm going to make it black. Well, first off, let me go ahead and make the shape, the shape fill, uh, no fill, it's no color. So let me go ahead and put some animation on. I'm going to select this and go under animation, and we're going to have a wipe effect. So what it's going to do is it's going to exit, and I'm going to have this wipe effect and have it go from the top down. Right now, by default, it goes from the bottom up, but since the animation is active there, I'm going to go have it from the top down. See, now it goes there. Now, I'm going to set that to 5 seconds because we have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Set that to 5 seconds. Press return. Click play. And it's going to go down. It'll take about 5 seconds for it to go down. And I'm going to do the same for this one. So I'm going to select this and go ahead and add animation. And I'm going to go ahead. Also going to have this one exit and wipe down. So right now, defaults by wiping up. I'm going to go ahead and change that to from the top down. So now, now it does that. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this into this particular shape and kind of align it up correctly. So you can see those guides, they kind of showed up the, the top to the bottom, the left to the right, or the for horizontal guides, they kind of showed up. And it tells me where I am placing this particular shape. And so since the shape is active, this is the shape that's on top. You have to think of this as layers. The, the arrows with the numbers on, on top, the arrow with the multicolors on the bottom. So with that, I'm going to go ahead first is get rid of this border since uh, I still have that shape available. So I'm going to go under the format and s select shape outline and go ahead and click no outline. So that shape is still active. I'm going to make sure that uh, these this marquee, the outline here, is a solid line. Right now it's a dotted line. That means I can edit what's in the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the shape itself. Now it turns into a solid line. I'm going to right click and send to the back. So right now it's hidden because this color is on top. This particular arrow is on top. Uh, maybe I can also move this shape. I'm going to select everything. Select and kind of move it in the middle. And right now if I play it, 
you'll notice that uh, it, it goes down, but this particular animation doesn't do anything. So what I need to do is I need to change it. Right now it is doing it afterwards. So I need to click on animation number two right here. Go back to the animation tab here. Click on this animation and make sure this says with previous. This is the first one. You see that mouse there? It tells me that the animation is going to start when I click on it. The second animation here, it's going to start with the previous animation, which is this first one here. And I'm going to have that also at five seconds. And once I click on that, I can go ahead and click play. And you notice now, as five seconds goes by, and it goes five, four, three, two, one. Both animations are running simultaneously, and it looks like it's doing a countdown. Let me go into the slideshow view, and you can see once I click my mouse, it goes five, four, three, two, one, goes right to the bottom and disappears. So that's how we can do it with the arrow. Let me go ahead and show you the last example. So now I have a blank canvas here now, and I want to show the last example where we had the square and had the number in it, and it went five, four, three, two, one. So what I can do right now is let me go, go back to the home tab, and I'm going to use this way, and I'm going to take one of these uh, ob objects here. Let me go ahead and take the rounded rectangle object. And if I want to draw a perfect square, I just press the Shift key and kind of draw it out. It's going to draw a perfect square. And when that is set, I'm going to go ahead and just type the number. Let me start with, maybe I'll start with 1 this time. And go ahead and uh, select that. Double click. Whoop. Let me select it here. Double click. And you see it's selected now. And increase the font size to probably 66 is fine. And as I did before, I'm going to go ahead and press the Control D to duplicate this. Go ahead and just press it four times. One, two, three, four. And this will be number five. And I'll move it out. And this will be number four. And I'll move it out here. This will be number three. And let me move it down here. And this will be number two. And move it, whoops, no enter. I'm going to just move it over here. So what I can do now is I can just select everything here and go ahead and click the animation and I'm going to have this disappear too. So these will all have a disappear exit animation. And now you can see it's selected it there. So let me go ahead and uh, set these. So 5 is going to be the first one. Actually, this should be the first one. I'm going to go ahead and move this up. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five. So five is right here. You can you can tell because when I hover over it, it says disappear around at rectangle 12, but with five. So that indicates that this one is the one. You should also notice that if I click on the object here in the animation pane, you will notice that the uh, the number here shows up in a different color. So that indicates that's the one. So I'm, one should go to the bottom. So I'm going to bring that to the bottom. So basically, it should it should be five, four, three, two. One. So let's see this one. This one is two. This should go second to the bottom. Let me move that down. Let me go and see what this one is. This is three. This is in the middle. And this one now is uh, four. So it could be five. You look at the uh, the shape fill the shape digit here. That's four. That one's highlighted. Or I can just hover over it. And if I hover over it, that says. Uh, rounded rectangle 9, 2, and this one says rounded rectangle 8, 1. So that's the order that I wanted to have played. And what I want to do is also uh, remove that mouse click. This first one should be a mouse click, so I'm going to go ahead and select that on click and get rid of this. This one should indicate with previous. Right now it shows this mouse icon, so it says start on click. I'm going to change that to with previous. So all of them should be with previous. So as I mentioned earlier before, where we had the numbers, countdown in the inverse, this is the same here. So the first one is going to be number five. That's going to be there the shortest amount of time. So that's going to be one second. So double click that, press one. And this one, this one is number four. You can see that it's highlighted here. This one should be two. So that number four should be on screen for two seconds. So this is the inverse of the numbers. And this one should be on screen for three seconds. Whoops. Let me go ahead and click that three seconds. So the next one should be four seconds. It should be on screen for four seconds before it disappears. And the last one should be on screen for five seconds before it disappears, which is the number one. So that's set. And what I want to do now is I want to move these numbers all on top of each other. So let me go ahead and move four over here. 
And let's see if it covers the 5 or goes under the 5. So it does go under the 5, so that's perfect. So 3 should go under all of them. And then 2 should go under it. And then 1 should go under it here. So let me go ahead and select all this and just kind of move it into the center here. So let me go ahead and click play and see how this works. So it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right? And if we want to see it in slideshow view, click on the slideshow view and then just press the space bar or the mouse button. We have 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One. So that's our countdown with this particular example. So there you go. There's our three examples of how to create some countdown timers. Uh, one that looks like uh, stop lights. The other one looks like a, an arrow pointing down. And the last one here, which is a shape with a number in there counting down to disappear. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.